Good morning everyone. We're back and uh, this week we're doing some lace. So is this a subject that you've always feared, like stayed away from because you were nervous about painting it? Well, uh, today uh, we'll, we'll tackle that. So let me just uh, grab uh, something here and I will move on over to my demo. Okay, so first of all, just even the drawing part of it can be very intimidating. So when I am tackling something that is extremely complex, I might want to um, simplify things. So here I have an enlarged uh, printout of, of the uh, image. I have a piece of, this is gray, graphite paper. It is different than um, carbon paper. Carbon paper is ink. You don't want that. It'll turn out really black and uh, very, very permanent. So you certainly don't want a lot of black outlines around all of your lace, which of course is going to show through, like dark lines are going to show through your watercolor. So this is gray graphite. Put the dark side down. And I have taped this along the top just to make sure it doesn't move, right? Slide this underneath. And then you can use something, you can use like a ballpoint pen if you want to. Um, I like to use, this is called a stylus. It's a, uh, it's a little tool with a, uh, you know, a little point, but rounded point on each end. And you can um, basically go around all your lines. So what I transferred here was, you know, the obvious stuff. The holes in the lace and, uh, you know, my little buttons that I put in there as a little accent. And now I have it all traced. But before I take this off, whenever it's a really complex subject, there's one thing that I always, always do. And that is to make some sort of registration mark because if I forgot to trace something or if I forgot to, uh, you know, if I lose my lines for some reason, I want to be able to find them again. So I can't see through this, so I wouldn't be able to line that back up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a registration mark. Now I want this to go on the, on the masking tape, not on my painting, of course. But I just want to make a little line here, across the edge of the, across the edge of the, uh, where the paper ends. And I'll put a line that goes straight through it too, like an X. Right? You could do it this way too. You could do an X this way. That would work. Sorry, my pen's not working very good, but uh, you could do an X like this. To mark where your um, where your paper has to go back if you ever needed to transfer it again. A lot of people forget this part and then they get part way in and they go uh oh I forgot to trace something. So uh, let's uh, let's take a look what that looks like. Now I would do this in a few places by the way. I would do this probably up here as well. Just make sure you're not making your marks on your actual um, <laughs> paper, that it's going onto the tape and not your painting. Okay, my pen is not, hasn't got much ink, so that's just gonna have to be good enough. Now I have the confidence of being able to take this off and if, if I run into any issues, I can line that back up. These are called registration marks. So it helps you to put it back in the same place. So there's a lot of design on this, right? You could paint this very sort of loose and interpretive, uh, very impressionistic. That would be one way of painting this. I, uh, if, you, if you're here, I presume that you are following at least my Instagram or something like that and you have seen some of my work and you know that I'm pretty much a realist. 
So I'm going to take more of a realist approach to this. Uh, yeah, Anna, there is uh, the reference image is in uh, on my Facebook page currently, uh, directly in the comment section below where I've posted this uh, link to come here. Now, let me just, I haven't got my palette lined up here. Let's do that. There we go. Here's my palette and uh, I've got paper towels, I've got two water containers, and I'm going to use a smallish round brush. It's a number seven that I have. This one's a, this is a squirrel hair brush, but you could use a synthetic brush. That would be fine too. Uh, let me see. I'm going to use a larger one too. Uh, you know, there's certain areas that I want to do. So lace isn't really a lot different from other fabrics, except of course the holes. But first and foremost, we want to create the form. So the, the fabric goes up, it goes down and so on. And the light is hitting it in different ways. So I want to look at, let me grab my reference picture again. I want to look at things like, you know, how this part of the fabric gets darker here. Uh, it's darker underneath here, right? Where we're actually seeing a little bit of the underside of the lace. And uh, I want to establish those areas first because those are areas, uh, well, not so much this one maybe, but certainly this one, we want to do that sort of wet on wet. Um, there's sort of fades off here a little bit at the top, uh, that sort of thing. So I'm just going to start there. I'm going to use my larger brush, dampen, dampen this area. Be, be nice if I actually clean my brush first. <laughs> Let's blend that out. Must have had a little bit left in my brush there. All right, so I'm spreading that out so that that will just sort of blend into the rest of my uh, painting. And I will come in and I will put a shadow. So for my shadow, uh, I could do something like a let's do maybe I don't want it too gray looking that's that's the issue that you have a lot with uh, with objects that are white I don't want all my shadows gray uh, it tends to look just really I don't know uh, deadens the painting so I'm going to instead use something with a little bit more color I'm going to use a little raw sienna and a little neutral tint mixed into that because I don't want it too too golden. I want to dull it down so it'll be a little bit warmer and I will put in a little bit of shadow here. Probably could have used a little bit more neutral tint but Get some paper towels so I can blot my brush. I'm like quite wet here, so now I want to make sure I get this sort of looking rounded, so I have to soften this upper edge. All right, if there's any other places that are like that, then I would go ahead and do that. So I'm going to wet this area up towards the top and I'm going to maybe just put a couple of little puckers maybe in the fabric. You see that it's kind of stitched here and it's subtle, subtle, subtle stuff. But, uh, you know, I might put a couple of little puckers in that area. A little darker up in the corner here. And maybe a little pucker here. pucker here. Um, okay, so those areas are wet, but this area here, this little fold over, 
I'm going to do this on dry because I need to keep that sort of contained within uh, you know that area I don't want it really softened because it's the underside okay I've got that I've got a try not to put my hand in wet paint up here but I've got a corner up here that is actually quite quite a bit darker than the other areas too Now there's one thing that can really spoil the look of lace, in my opinion, and that is uh, when you when you make every line smooth. If you uh, you know, lace has texture. Uh, I've got the the piece here, so if I take a look at this lace, you know, it's it's actually got a thickness. It's not like paper, so you know you see. Uh, all kinds of uh, shadows and you see uh, you know the actual depth of things you know you can see that there's an edge on it and that sort of thing so I'm going to pay attention to some of those things um, I'm going to just jump ahead here and put in some of the shadows that are on the table as well because they're they're fairly dark well, I'm doing this on dry because I need to have a uh, need to have a uh, crisp line but at the edge of the lace um, I don't want to make it like too smooth like I don't want to just take my brush and run it up the side of the lace there I need to be able to um, sort of portray the the uh, threads along the edge of the lace and that sort of thing all right, so I need to get a little bit more, maybe some of this raw sienna. I need to transition because this is not as dark, the same darkness all the way across this shadow. It starts getting lighter. So I switched up my color. Wow, that can make a huge difference in your painting, by the way. Switching up your color partway through a um, transition like that. Or transitioning to a different color, a warmer color, from a warm to a cool, from a dark to a light, from one color to another. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush here. And I want to soften this edge, this, this edge right here. And I'm, I kind of abandoned that for a second, but I'm coming back to it. I just want to soften this before this has a chance to dry. So I'm laying the brush down in front of it. And I let just the tip of my brush touch that wet color and it will blend out. So I'm going to go, I'm going to switch again to maybe a little more, maybe a little bit more pink. I don't want to go too pink here. I'm, I want to go crazy, but I want to switch over again to a little bit more of a pink color. I love these transitions in uh, in shaded areas. All right, so you see that there's like look at all the colors in that shadow. So much more interesting than just using a gray, like infinitely in more interesting. All right, so I'm going to kind of stick with this this little combination of colors here as I come down and I add some of the shadows on the table. A little bit of a little bit of neutral tint. I'm I'm looking to see where's it a little bit darker, where's it a little bit lighter. Where can I introduce a little bit of color? And where can I soften an edge? Uh, that's an important one too. And softening an edge means blotting your brush. Don't forget that blot. And just lay your brush in the clean area and just tickle the edge of that color 
with the end of your brush and it will get soft. I mean, what's lace without some softness, right? Let's continue on and we'll put a little bit more shadow underneath here. Gosh, you could just have fun with these shadows. A good watercolor sketchbook. I make my own sketchbooks because I like my I like my Arsh paper, and uh, so what I do is I make my own sketchbook, and I actually have a video on that, how to make your own. Uh, I also will like I mean if I'm sketching, the paper's not quite as important, but uh, you do want something that's not going to wrinkle too much, of course. Uh, I would say I think Arches has uh, Arsh has some some sketchbooks. Uh, I think um, I don't know. I usually make my own, so I don't have a lot of recommendations to offer. Uh, but I'm sure some of you have some sketchbooks that you like. Maybe you can uh, share your favorites. Uh, Right, so you can see some of these shadows that are happening in here. I'm, I love that that lightens up in there. That, that to me is really interesting. Now, I'm not just running a brush right along here because that lace has a little bit of bumpiness to it. You know, it's, it's got threads wrapped around the end of it and everything else. So I don't want it like perfect and smooth because that's when it really looks like it's fake, it's paper, uh, you know, it can kind of spoil the effect. Just making it a little bit darker right here. Blot my brush to soften anything. And uh, yeah, so that's a lot of my main shadows. And uh, I can now start thinking about the holes in the lace. So when we're dealing with the holes in the lace, we have to think about sort of what is in behind. Don't just, uh, you know, I, I intentionally made this image uh, so that the lace wasn't sitting flat on the table. If the if it were fit, sitting flat on the table, I would have all constant, it, like all these uh, gaps, all these holes in the lace would all be the same color because it would be laying flat. But, but since I have lifted it up, there's things, there's light coming on underneath, you know, it's little pockets of light. It's, it's kind of like walking through the forest and you have that dappled light. So we're getting kind of that sort of thing happening in the holes of the lace. So that's what I want to look at. Yes, I hear that etcher sketchbooks are good. Yeah, that's, that's a good recommendation. Um... Oh, okay. The um... all right. So at, if I'm if I'm working up here, and I have this color as my background, that means that the holes in the lace will need to match that. Okay, you know, because that's basically a continuation of whatever this is. Right, that shadow there. So I need to continue with that same coloring. I can start transitioning it as I come into the holes of the lace, but I will um, uh, initially start off so that it matches the other side. There's nothing weirder. You know, you know you've probably seen people who do watercolors and they're, they're painting uh, like a sky on two sides of a tree trunk. And on one side of the tree trunk, the sky is really dark. And then on the other side of the tree trunk, it's really light suddenly, and there's something very odd about that. So you need to make it look as continuous as possible. So I'm aiming for the same value and the same color as what's here. As I start coming down into the lace, I can start transitioning, but for now, this just has to match the outside. I'll zoom in as I do some of these holes so that you can see it a little bit better. I can probably shift this 
up a little bit too. Okay, so I'm working in the upper left corner. And incidentally, the holes are not the only thing I will paint. Uh, I will paint the, um, <laughs> the actual lace as well. I just need to get some of the darks established here because without those, it's very easy to lose your lines. And being as complex as this is, uh, that's not something that I want to happen. I don't want to have to repeat that uh, process. Now I'm putting my hand in wet color here, so give me a moment. I'm just going to dry this lower right corner before I carry on. So this, uh, this piece of lace, it's not a very expensive one. I just actually got it at the dollar store. It has actually something painted on it, which I really don't care for, but I wanted it more for the lace only. And this works just fine. So I'm only using the small corner of it anyway. And there are all kinds of different lace. There's obviously, um, you know, handmade lace where it's, you know, little crocheted with crochet cotton and that sort of thing. You can get the really, uh, really nice, um, what do they call it, cut lace and that sort of thing. There's so many different things that can that look really nice. All right, that should be good. I'm not going to be putting my hand in wet color. So I'm going back to this neutral tint color and I'm going to come up into these some of these holes. Uh, probably need it a little bit darker because I know that's going to dry lighter. There we go, a little bit darker so that it matches. So this, once I establish some of these shadows so that I can actually sort of visualize and see the lace, then I can come in and, and get a lot more subtle. And I really recommend putting some of these darks in to your painting early because it really helps you to sort um, sort of the value ranges that you're going to be putting into your painting. Uh, you're going to have some dark darks, you're going to have some light lights. Uh, but you, before doing this, I would I would suggest putting in uh, now we're kind of looking straight at this piece of lace but down in the corner where we put that shadow I would put any of those folds and and that sort of thing in before uh, you know doing too much detail here trying not to make my edges too uh, too clean, too smooth. In other words, yes, they're hard edges, yes, but they, you know, if I make them too perfect, this just doesn't look like natural lace. Probably going to have to come back and, and add a couple of darks. I can see that the next sort of section that I have to do, it's going to have to be darker. So I'm going to start transitioning here, get a little bit more dark into the bottom of this little segment. You can see the sort of wiggly edges I'm I'm creating here in a couple of places. You don't have to make them all wiggly, but make sure there's something in there that looks a little more natural. Now this is where things get fun because you can start uh, shifting the the values in some of these and really give this feeling that you, it's not laying flat on a table. A rainy street with puddles, uh, that's one of the suggestions. Great, yeah. 
uh, are the color choices for the shadows tied into the button color? Actually, no, uh, not specifically. Uh, I mean, these are grays and there's certainly no but, uh, grays in the button. However, the holes and the shadows on the buttons may also incorporate some of this. Uh, but no, it wasn't, uh, I wasn't thinking, oh, I've got to match my, my button shadows. But yeah, whenever you are painting something, it's not a bad idea to sort of cross-pollinate your colors across your composition. That would uh, definitely help unify your painting. So it, it's a definite consideration, yes, although I wasn't consciously doing it. And because I'm painting it and it's not a photograph, I can, I can introduce colors in places that maybe don't even exist, like colors that aren't in the, ref uh, the actual reference picture or in life. I can switch up colors. It's, you know, the options you have as a real artist. You're painting, you get to do what you want. All right, most of these uh, little little lace holes are a little on the gray side, so I'm not switching it up too much, but I could, you know, if I wanted to pop a little red in there or something, that too is a little of that cross-pollination. You, you know, we've got a red button. I can incorporate some of the reds into my shadows the way I did down here. So uh, that that can be helpful too. I'm trying to roll up my sleeves here. I've got a fuzzy sweater, which is not smart for <laughs> for painting, really. But all right, so I'm work with a fairly small brush. And then we have some small lace holes in here. I'll just quickly put some of these in. And one of the reasons I like to use this neutral tint uh, is it's it's not a it's not a harsh shadow. It usually has a it's a very soft kind of gray, and it uh, it also tends not to bleed too much. At least this brand I'm using, Da Vinci. No, sorry, this one is Windsor Newton, because I didn't couldn't get my Da Vinci last time, so this one's Windsor Newton. And it's very easy, very, very easy on uh, on subjects of lace to go on autopilot. You see the line drawing and you can suddenly all of a sudden all of your all of your holes look exactly the same. But you've got to be watching because sometimes you have uh, lighter, lighter bits in some of these places. Maybe the hole's not completely open or um, it's folded over on itself a little bit or something like that. I forgot a little hole up here, so I'll just come back to this one and, and fill that in. And I'm going to do the major holes first. Um, these ones are kind of the obvious ones. Put down your place markers, I guess you could call these. Put those down early and gives you somewhere to, you know, it's like a, a beacon. You can follow where you are based on what you've got. Where you need to go based on what you've got. All right, so that's uh, that's already starting to look kind of nice, but I have nothing on my um, like this is white paper underneath. I have got I've got no form, I've got no texture, no nothing on the lace itself. So that has to that part has to be considered, and if I don't consider that part, then uh, I'm going to end up with a, a rather flat looking painting. You've probably seen, you know, magazines and things like that. You've probably seen pictures of or paintings of uh, these wonderful lace uh, tablecloths and and still life set up on it and all of that sort of thing. And it's the attention to detail that has uh, that makes the realism in those cases. All right, so 
I could, you know, this could take me a while to do, but I'm going to transition over to um, some of these other larger um, holes in the lace because this is where the transition of those shadows starts to happen. And I want to make sure that I'm capturing that with my um, with my application of these uh, shadows. So I'm coming in, that's probably a little too red, let's get a little more neutral tint in here. But uh, I want to come in and add some of the shadows and they will start transitioning, getting lighter as I go along. Because a little more, like those holes are a little more open, the light can get in there a little bit more. All right. And I can even come back into some of these uh, shadows again, because within this one, there's a darker spot. So I'm going to wait for that to dry and I'll add that in. This one's pretty light, so I'll just dilute this a little bit. And these are the things that give the impression that this is raised up. And we're kind of looking through little windows here and we can see what's in behind. Drop a little bit of a little bit of neutral tint in here just to let that soften and blend in that spot. Probably could do a little bit of that here too. Except it's uh, I think it's starting to dry a little bit, so I'll have to blot my brush and Soften it manually. All right, we're not sure what's going on back there, but we know that there's, you know, a little bit of light and dark happening. So I'm just kind of looking in each, each of these little windows of the lace to sort that out. A good thing about most lace is that you have at least something of a pattern that you can hopefully follow. Most lace isn't, you know, arbitrary. It's most most of the time it's got a little bit of a pattern. But even if it doesn't have a pattern, uh, you you know, if you use the method of transferring the design uh, that I was showing you at the start, then, uh, you know, you can sort it out. This could be a little lighter here, so I'll pull some of that up. Just with my blotted brush, I can drink up some color and make something lighter. All right, so I'll do a couple more of these, and then I will I will show you this portion how I would proceed there. Obviously, you know, there's quite a bit of lace here. Lace does take time. There's 
no question it does does take time as you're painting this you know i mean you like i said you could do it you could do it impressionistically and and really kind of make everything soft and just suggest where these things are but i'm a realist and you know i like to get into the detail cuz i enjoy that part but maybe that's not your person painting personality so your approach might be a little bit different or another painter's approach might be a little different than mine and that's that's fine <laughs> everybody everybody's different and that's a good thing uh, okay we've got questions uh don't i'm not really seeing uh, lots of greetings thank you oh what color is the neutral tint um it always with the neutral tint uh, well I'm grabbing like I've got a little bit of permanent rose here I've got a little raw sienna there and I'm just sort of uh, arbitrarily I guess changing it up but it's uh, it's a permanent red that I'm using permanent rose I sh should say not permanent red permanent red is very staining <laughs> so oh, I have too much of that on my brush Permanent rose quite staining, but I like, uh, or permanent red is strain, staining, permanent rose is what I prefer. That's kind of a, a strong cast shadow here, you know, it's kind of, and this hole, this let me just show this here. I'm working on this one right here. This hole right here, it looks like there's some of the fabric that's sort of rolled up and right up against the back of the, the lace. So this isn't a dark hole at all. So don't treat all of your lace uh, like it needs dark holes because that wouldn't give the right impression. So this, this is a good example of that. You know how this hole um, uh, is only half dark and then this one is is darker because the whatever the roll is underneath it's it's going down so this is more like a cavern shall we say what colors did i use with the neutral tint um i used raw sienna and permanent rose So there's a funny little shadow here. I'm going to put that across. It needs an edge softened, so I'll blot my brush. Lay it in the clean area. Tickle with the tip. get my color a little wetter it felt like a it was a little dry on my brush so I just added a bit more water to my mix okay I'll come down as far as the button and then I'll um, I'll come in and show you what I would do darker there then it starts to get light so I'm just going to paint clean water up here and that will the wet color will blend into that water I just put there and fade
always looking to see whether or not every hole is, is the same or whether there's some differences. And there's definitely a little bit here. So blot my brush. Remember to blot your brush. A lot of people forget. Then you get blossoms. This one's a little bit warmer. I see, you know, it's a little more golden at the top and then it fades down to more of this gray color. So that's how I painted it in. And this one. Now I'm going to come back up to, to this one up here and I'm going to add in this is probably a hole from another piece of, like it's just folded over on itself so it's more lace underneath it's like lace on lace and so this is going to have a dark darker spot there which looks like it continues down to here or at least has more lace right in there so you get the feeling of lace on lace looking for any of those spots where it might indicate lace underneath and uh, yeah so so these holes uh, look fairly convincing to me right now so I'm just going to go on and right so I'm now I'm going to thin down my color a little bit I'm going to water it down because now I need something a little bit more subtle and still want to use that sort of three combination of color that neutral tint raw sienna permanent rose but I want to make sure it's not too strong and I'm going to indicate some of the the little um, um, needle holes, I guess, along the border of this lace. Some of them actually are a little bit darker. You might be thinking, oh my gosh, needle holes, really, Shelley? <laughs> it's like a little bit excessive, isn't it? And yes, it is, but I'm, I'm a high realist. So, I, you know, I would pay attention to that thing. And I just, I just find that that makes it look a little bit more convincing. Um, always checking, you know, are they all exactly the same? Nope. There, you know, there's some places where it gets a little bit more sort of muddled and you can't really make it out as well. So some of them will be darker. And then, you know, it's so easy. That autopilot thing can mess you up all the time. So I want to make sure that I'm getting something that looks quite a lot like my reference. All right, there's little lace holes. Whoop-de-doo. So <laughs> I'm going to... Uh, um, now, around... Now this is this is really tiny here, but um, you know if you wrap lace around the edge of something, it's going to get you know a little bit rounder, correct? So I need to create that feeling of roundness, and to me it looks like this thread's a little bit. It's either old and it's yellowed a little bit, or it's just a little bit warmer. So I'm going to put a little bit more of my raw sienna in it, and I'm going to. Uh, make a shadow to so in order to make this little border look like it's rounded instead of just flat white paper 
I'm going to come in and put a shadow along the side of this. But again, you can't. You gotta watch. You don't go on autopilot because what happens is, at some point, you know, if this is turning, the light's gonna hit it differently. So therefore, I have to switch sides here. So easy to just keep going, right? It's like mindlessly keep going especially if you're chatting with your friends and and you're not paying attention it's so easy to miss those things you'll notice that I'm not just taking my brush and running a straight line either I'm kind of dabbling it in because that will help with the feeling of texture on these uh, on these threads Some of them, it's, it, you can hardly tell what it is, so I'm just going to dabble some very pale color. Can, I hope you can see that. It's, uh, it's subtle, but I'm just sort of dabbling. So, for example, to show the, the feeling of the lace here, I can dabble a little bit to indicate the threads like that, and then sort of run that shadow along the one side. So I'll do the same here. These, are, these ones are a little bit more obvious. Um, so they're a little easier to see but you can see that what I did is I just kind of hinted at the lace or at the uh, threads along the side of the lace and then I add that shadow in other areas it's less obvious <laughs> you can't see it as well so not to not to paint it we're not painting every thread on this lace by the way we are going to give a pretty good representation i hope but not painting every single thread we're just going to give the idea of it allude to it with a few strokes okay so that that part's starting to shape up we're starting to feel now that that's not like cut out of paper that you know that there's some volume that there's actually you know threads of lace that are, are working around um, when I have a finished when I when I have finished the tutorial do you carry on and completely finish the painting to your satisfaction and if you do can we see some of them please yes um, absolutely I I usually will uh, depends on my week, but uh, I will usually try to finish up a, uh, a demo. Um, this week's pretty nuts. I may not get to it right away, but uh, I will try to finish it. And I, you know, if you're looking for my finished things, you know, I often paste, uh, post them on my uh, Instagram. I don't know how many of you are on Instagram, but um, on my Instagram and or my Facebook page. So Shelley Pryor Fine Art is my uh, handle for both of those trying not to go too golden here I've got to I've got to temper that uh, bright ro it's not bright raw sienna but I've got to temper it with a bit of that neutral tint because I don't want it to suddenly uh, jump off the page all right, so we have, you know, that's how I would deal with that part of the lace, that sort of thing on the lace. Uh, so I would um, indicate some of the the holes. I would indicate the idea of some of the lace. And then I would um, uh, make sure I had the holes, the interior of the holes, uh, the right value and everything uh, but then we have 
um, this part here all right this part here it's it's almost like there's like a ribbon that has been sort of um, added in and formed to create you know these shapes it's not true cut lace it is a representation of it um, I don't know this might have a this type of lace might have a name maybe one of you know what that is but uh, this lace here looks to me like it's about four rows like four rows of stitching show the actual lace maybe I can uh, give you the idea here but you know this this looks like it's a a ribbon this little thing that I'm holding here uh, that looks like it's a ribbon and it's not totally flat it's got a little bit of texture so I'm just going to take a little bit of this quite thin and dab 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 all the way down uh, if if the if that ribbon it starts to change directions so will my brush so I'm making a little bit of a let's get my reference picture closer here um, and that comes all the way down so we're just going to carry on here I'm not even making strokes I'm just touching my brush to the paper and because I've got my brush at a little bit of an angle it's leaving a little bit of a almost a dash um, you can always blot if it looks too dark you can always take your paper towel and quickly blot it before it dries It's white on white, right? So we have to we have to be as subtle as we can about these things. But you'd be surprised, you know, some of this subtle stuff that you do will really um, really make this so much more convincing. All right, I'm going to do some more of that. Um, in in this section up here like you can see the difference between this and what the, like this looks like I didn't paint it and I didn't it's just left um, just left white paper and a lot of people will leave that and to me that just doesn't look finished so it doesn't describe the real um, texture that I'm seeing in my lace so I'm going to sort of continue with some of this dabbling very little color you know and that's the important thing if you come in with dark color oh this is going to look weird so you, you've got to really water down your color for this and on white, pure white paper, uh, pretty much any any hint of color is going to show. So it, you really don't need a lot of color. But if the lace starts changing direction, so should your brush. Okay, blot with my paper towel. There's a couple of little darker um, bits right here, for example. I can add those in. Anywhere where I see something a little darker. Uh, even, even the edge here, you know, it's a little bit soft. I'm going to put a little bit of shadow right there on the edge of the lace
my my picture ends but my paper do doesn't <laughs> it keep, kind of keeps going i'll have to kind of invent that i guess uh, but that's that's basically how i would do this and if i'm coming around to the next sort of segment this is where my brush angle would change you see how it's my brush makes I can either change my brush angle or I can turn my paper and I need to create those dashes. Those dashes need to go sort of crosswise against that lacy part rather than, you know, this way, I've, I've, they're going across the grain or across the uh, direction of the lace or the length of the ribbon. I need my paint a little bit wetter. It's making too much of a hard line, so I need my paint in my brush to be a little wetter so that it ends up looking more subtle. It's creating a texture is basically what I'm doing. bending so so is my brush or the direction of my brush is changing you know so it feels like it actually goes around um, you, you'll know right away to I mean you'll kind of hopefully you'll intuitively do that sort of thing anyway because um, there's a curve happening and you know you'll know your brush has to follow that curve You know, when you see some of my um, paintings with lace or something, uh, you know, you'll realize that, yeah, I've spent a lot of time working on those paintings uh, to make them look realistic. So if you're kind of an imp impatient painter, maybe this isn't your, your, uh, your thing, but um, if, if realism is what you're after, then I would uh, encourage you to bring your patience to the table <laughs> because you're going to need it. Now some of this dabbling can also happen in other areas. So here for example, um, I, I see that this almost looks like a a waffle pattern. So the shadows, shadows are kind of going lengthwise a little bit more, uh, but I'm just going to bring those shadows down with a dabbly line right, those ones are those are the obvious ones and a bit of a bit of a shadow kind of like right under here under that edge put a little bit of that in and just lightly tap in a couple of couple of little subtle things in there and and I, you get the same sort of feel as what's the, the what the uh, photograph is telling you. So again, I'm looking at, uh, you know, I don't want these to look unfinished. I need to put something in there. So I'm going to put in some of the shadow like I did, um, like I did over here, put in some of the shadow. Some of these threads that they end up using on uh, lace uh, are occasionally uh, like a shiny kind of, like, you know, there's a bit of a sheen to the lace, to the uh, thread. So if it's wrapped multiple times, it's like when you look at a spool of thread and it's wrapped all around the spool of thread, so you get this um, uh, shine that happens on the, on the spool, which I happen to have one right here. You see that there's a shine on it because it has been wrapped around the the thing so many times so you get a shadow on this side and you get a highlight here 
you get a shadow over here and that sort of thing. Um, Okay, so we've got a little bit more of this uh, uh, same sort of thing. And the nice thing is that you do a little bit of this and you get a lot faster at it. And you realize, okay, it doesn't have to be quite that precise. <laughs> you know, I don't have to count them or anything like that. But, um, but you can get a uh, pretty good uh, sort of representation of it anyway. This is like half a shade darker than the white of the paper. So there's really not much color here at all. All right, now look, is there anything that needs a little bit more uh, a little bit more texture, a little bit more depth. Um, you know, is there is there like a little fold or crinkle in here? You know, if there is, then you have to add that in. Yeah, this is this is a, a one hour demo ish <laughs> one hour ish not exactly we're at the one hour mark now but um, you know obviously this is something that's going to take me a while to do but I can certainly show you all the all the um, sort of different scenarios that you run into as you're painting as you're painting the lace so I'm just... I'm coming in with a little bit more color just in a couple of places just to reinforce or emphasize form or shadow at this point for these little individual lace, uh, lacy threads and things like that. Um, all right, let's get a little bit in. I didn't do the lacy bits in here. Now you could get as precise as you want, you know, like I said, that's your whatever your painting personality is. I'm kind of uh, uh, this is maybe a little faster than I would go through it if I were working on my own because right, I would you know, if I were doing a painting, like a full painting out of this, it probably would take a little bit of extra time, but uh, just because we're on a bit of a time restraint. I mean, I could stay here all day, except I have other commitments. <laughs> but but a lot of what happens on this, on these lacy bits because it's you know threads that are wrapped around and around and around uh, you know it's not a lengthwise uh, kind of thing so it's across these little sections and so you have to uh, kind of slow it down and do it little piece at a time you know it's like 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 the old saying how do you eat an elephant one bite at a time Happily is just a just a saying. <laughs> it's not a not a reality, thank goodness. But um, you know, if you had to imagine the the task at hand, you know, one little piece at a time. That's all that all that it boils down to.
Now I can see like some of these areas, some of these holes, they could be darker, right? And so I could come in and correct the value in that section. So this looks a little unfinished, so we need to come in with a little bit more color. So I could come in here and the whiteness of the segments around or the lace part around that will look brighter or whiter. So I can come in with another layer of neutral tint and get all this darker. And yeah, that's repeating a lot of what I just did, but you know, it needs to be done. So I do it. Rinse my brush, soften in between here. So there's a variation in that little hole and then it's coming a little darker here too. Remember if it's wet and it looks correct, it's not going to be correct when it dries because of the um, lightning that happens with watercolor. I like the drama, the dark against the light in lace and, well, a lot of things in my paintings, but, you know, lace is a good example. So I might, uh, I might darken this a little bit more than even the photograph shows. In fact, I might have to darken that corner now. Alright, so that starts to feel a little more real. Um, I darkened it. It's, uh, it's looks too dark right now, but by the time that dries, I think that that's going to be a, approximately right. Uh, that's just something you've got to get used to in watercolors, you know, colors drying lighter and that sort of thing. So, let me see here. Just darken these a couple of spots a little bit more. Really adds to the realism, I think. But uh, yeah, so uh, this this area is looking closer to complete, but I would not say it's complete yet. I'd still uh, still like to um, give a little bit more mid value into some of these spots. I just feel like it is not quite uh, quite established yet, but I'll often move along to something else and then I will um, step back and I'll look at it and see whether or not it, it's all fitting together. So let me let me zoom out for a moment, give you the opportunity to see it at a distance. Uh, but you can see that you know it's a fair representation of of what I'm after you know, that it re reads correctly. So, um, <laughs> meditation. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I actually had somebody once tell me that um, I had, I w I'm the, the female version of Bob Ross, <laughs> which I thought was kind of funny. But, uh, yeah, anyway. <laughs> And, you know, some of these areas look a little unfinished, and that's mainly because we don't have 
you know, the, the darker spots in there. So, you know, I could kind of work my way across the painting, but you can sort of see it coming together. I probably will um, put in a bit of shadow in this section before uh, adding in the, all the little the little details like I did up here. So let me show you what that might look like. Uh, I'll work with pretty wet color here. It's very important that the color be wet because if it's not wet, uh, what you're going to end up with is um, all of a sudden you'll have a dark line. And I'm putting this on dry paper, but uh, you'll see that I will soften it very quickly. And softening it requires that this paint that I'm putting on right now, that this paint be quite... Uh, quite fluid so that I can do this. Blot my brush and soften this edge. If that dried, if I'm too slow and that dries, I'm sunk, right? I could wet the sec section first as well. That would also be another option. But I want to create that, that feeling that that is sort of curving there. Let's put a little bit more color here. And gets a little bit lighter and just before it drops off I think that this has just a little bit of a little bit of shadow right along the top there it's not much I think I put too much there but I'll pull some of that off blend it out now that feels like it's it's rounded but I also see, oh yeah, that's that's dried too light. I'm going to have to come back and revisit that. And there's a lot of sort of push-pull that happens in watercolor that uh, requires sort of revisiting areas. Uh, at least, you know, the way I'm working, it, that seems to be the case. So, yeah, should I carry on this one next week? What do you think? Let's let's hear your let's hear your vote. Shall I carry on with this one next week? Put it in the chat and let me know. If you're watching the recording of this, then uh, it would be a two part. My curly wig. <laughs> oh yeah, Bob Ross. <laughs> I had to think back to what I had said. Yes, Bob Ross. Mm. You know, he may not have been uh, everybody's cup of tea in terms of uh, what he painted and everything, but I will say this: he definitely gave people the ability or the confidence to try painting even if they had no uh, no formal training. He made it feel possible. I think that's important, making it feel possible. I sometimes get people say things to me like, well, you make it look so easy, which I always chuckle at because it's like, well, you would you would uh, go running if I made it look hard. So, <laughs> so I try to make it look easy. And, and the ease in which uh, you make something look, to me, it's a real compliment because if you can make something look easy or effortless, it's more because um, of experience, I think. You just, you know, if you've got somebody who's, made pizza for 10 years well yeah they're going to make it look easy because they've been doing it a long time and uh you know me I, i'd have flour all over my kitchen and you know well, i'm not that bad but you get the idea okay so a little piece at a time you know, it, it starts to, it really starts to come together. But with things that are white and, you know, lace is of course no exception to that. You've got to think of um, like 
a very narrow value range. So we're, you know, we're not nothing in here other than the holes, the actual lace itself. Um, it's a very, very narrow um, value range. So we're staying, you know, if you if you know what a value scale looks like, and it's it's light on one end and it's dark on the other end, we're not working anywhere in the last you know, seven <laughs> or six or seven um, values. We're only working in, in the first few values. So you gotta, you gotta be subtle about it. You know, it's only in, it's only when you get into, you know, some of these shadows and stuff that you start getting darker, but uh, like under here, for example, I need to get darker right here. Let's get, let's get a little bit more color into this. Okay, so it looks like, oh, wow, that's, that's really dark for something that's supposed to be white. But, you know, shadow, a polar bear in a black, a room with no lights on would be dark, right? So you need to do that. Um, oh, yes, I think the star pattern in the middle could be quite interesting, too. Um, yeah, that's probably going to have to wait till next week. If we, if you want me to continue, um, oh yes, so most of you are saying yes, please, yes, please, let's let's keep going. All right, well I'll do that then, and uh, probably time for me to wrap up right now. Uh, but hope you got a couple of things out of that. You've got um, uh, remember if you if you do find my uh, reference picture on um, Facebook and you download it, you trace it the way that I traced it. Uh, don't forget those little registration marks, you know, these little marks that help you line it back up again. If I needed to put this back in the exact same spot, I simply find X marks the spot and I line up the ones at top too, because, you know, sometimes you think you got it right and then it's like, oh, it's a little off. But, you know, if I line all of this up, I can tape it back down trace anything that I might have forgotten or that maybe got lost or too light or whatever and um, and and I didn't mention this but I will mention it now it's when you're transferring when you're transferring you want this to look like pencil right nice and light like pencil so what I suggest is when you put your graphite paper underneath make a make a line or two and take a peek make sure is you're pressing hard enough or not too hard because you may have to adjust how, how much you're pressing. Uh, I will be, I, I am a weekly thing. I am, uh, Anna, I have uh, this live demo every week on Wednesday mornings, 10 o'clock Toronto time. And if you're not sure, if you're in another, in another time zone and you want to know, just go into Google search and say Toronto time and it'll tell you uh, what the difference is between where I am and where you are. Yeah, so that's Eastern time. So, uh, just gonna take a quick browse through to make sure I haven't missed any of the questions. I know sometimes I get to the end and I look back and I go, "Oh darn, I missed a question." And so um, it's hard to skim through. I usually ask that people put their uh, questions in capitals because it sure makes it easier for me to see. Uh, I have a large number of lithograph paintings by Rose Eden of entirely lace with the background as well. Um, as where as where her still life objects are placed. Yes, there's there's some artists who just you know love uh, painting things with lace and they love the complexity of this. And and as I said, it's not everybody's painting personality, but I, I love this kind of stuff. I, I I like the challenge of can I make it look real? Can I do it? You know, and I, I just love doing that. So, uh, yeah, so by that was Rose Eden, you said. Yeah, um, I took a workshop actually from, oh, I've forgotten her name. Uh, I'll think of it next week. Uh, let me see, I'm just skimming back through, rolling back through all these comments to make sure I haven't overlooked anything. 
If I did actually right now, if you have another question, is now's the time to ask because we will sign off so shortly. Um, uh, da -da -da -da. No, uh, I think I got them all. I got your request for a, a street, a rainy street with puddles. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of rain instead of snow this winter. It's been kind of a weird, weird winter here in uh, southern Ontario. Um, okay, well, I was looking for all the capitalized uh, comments, and I did. I don't think I missed any of the question. D has a question. Let's see. Uh, D is neutral. The best way to increase value. Um, I presume you mean the neutral tint. Uh, the idea of neutral tint uh, is that you know it it doesn't usually doesn't change the value too much, but you can use it more heavily, and it will uh, give you a real good dark, like here. It'll give you a real good dark, or you can <laughs> you can go as light as this, right? So it's all all in how much uh, water you're adding. Um, Yeah, but but in this case, you know, you the shadows are cooler, the highlights. Um, no, I don't want to. I don't want to get into all of that, but because you know, the the highlights are kind of warm here, or the shadows are kind of warm here. Uh, but I'm just kind of looking piece by piece on my painting or on my reference picture to see whether or not you know is that a, is that a little pinkish in there? I think that I think I see a little pink in there, and this is a little bit more more gray, which is gray. Most grays are a little closer to the cool family. So, you know, this is a little bit more gray and, you know, this is a little bit more warm and that sort of thing. So I'm just um, looking and I'm adding more neutral tint where it's more bluish or gray. And then I'm adding more of, you know, these two colors, basically. I guess it's kind of like your raw sienna and your button here. That was quite coincidental that it, that happened. But uh, yeah, the, I mean, I use those two colors here for a lot of the the highlights and the shadows or the the color in the shadows and you see I'm a little bit more crisp I guess than the printout this is just on regular copy paper you know I'm, I'm punching it up a little bit and that's I like it that way you don't have to you can keep it very very soft oh tatting yes tatting's a very uh a very uh um, <laughs> intricate uh craft Ocean waves, yes. Actually, I was just teaching some ocean waves uh, locally here um, in a workshop on Friday. But uh, ocean waves, yeah, for sure. I'm thinking about ocean waves, actually. Um, if you look, I'm right there painting. Oh, thanks, Mindy. Um, all right. Um, I think I think I got them all. <laughs> I hope I, I hope I got all the questions and uh, yeah so you repeated the question so I got that uh, all right well well let's wrap this one up then for today and uh, we're off to a good start here but we have a lot of little bits to do um, I, I might let me see I might do some of the some of this subtle stuff just because that could take a long time I might do some of that subtle stuff around this uh between this week and next we'll see we'll see i'll, I'll play it by ear but uh yeah anyway okay so have a great week everybody um we will see you next week and we'll finish this one up okay thanks so much see you next week